Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Isaac and I am Shaftev. I'm here with another video. Uh, this month we're talking about AI and my journey in trying to learn how to set one up. Um, I've only been coding for 12 months, so this has been uh, quite a difficult process in learning how all of these things work together. Um, I've seen a lot of videos online of people using steering algorithms and all those kinds of things and I haven't made it that far yet. Um, would like to one day figure all that out but at the moment we're settling with some more simple AI. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I've been at this for over three months. Uh, I've had a lot going on in my own life outside of game dev. I've been doing a lot of landscaping and working a lot. Um, I work in finance in the real world and it is quite a busy time for me. Uh, so there's that as well. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the AI. At the start of this year, I started working on getting an AI set up so that I could use it on various projects. Up until this point, I'd really only focused on learning character control and camera movement, um, plus all of the basics that you need to have for game programming but my knowledge on AI was very lacking. Um, I actually left out of enemies in the game that I made over Christmas because I wasn't confident that I could do it in the time frame that I set for myself. Um, it would take too long to implement. Didn't really know what I was doing. I was afraid that it was just gonna ruin the entire process and I wouldn't be able to ship the game before Christmas. And, uh, and I was half right. I've been at this for three months and uh, she's not looking too pretty. Uh, we're getting there. Um, but it's been a really good learning process. So with absolutely no idea, I checked online on write-ups on how to control enemies or AI or anything that's not the player. Um, I came across an article from Kids Can Code that I'll leave down in the description um, on pathfinding in Godot. Kids Can Code has a lot of really great articles on how to set up all sorts of different things. Um, and this one's very good as well. In hindsight, um, it wasn't really the right article for me. Um, it wasn't really the right path to go down. Uh, and I ended up doing something else, but it was useful as in learning the fundamentals of AI and how to get things moving in Godot. Um, getting that concept was really important. So I'm glad I found it. In terms of getting the enemies set up, the first thing I did was set up a good finite state machine for these different states that the AI was going to be cycling through. Uh, GD Quest has a free base structure online that you can clone from their GitHub. Uh, it's really good, I use it for everything. Can't stress this enough, if you haven't started using state machines in your game, uh, they are really a big deal. They will change everything about your game. It makes things a lot easier. Um, so the states that I set in for my AI were idle, patrol, chase, attack, stagger, and die. Um, I started with just trying to get the idle and patrol working from there, but my idea was that, um, you know, from time to time, the, the, the AI would just be sitting there not doing anything, maybe you've got like a looking around animation playing, um, and then it would patrol, I wanted it to walk from one place to the other, a short distance, like around a campfire, and then once it actually notice the player it would chase once it reached the player it would attack if it got attacked it would you know stagger and then eventually it would die so that was the base structure that i set down um, the only thing i set up in idle was a timer that sends a signal on its end to proceed into the patrol state and the time between idle and patrol is randomly set between one and seven seconds just to give it the illusion that it's sort of deciding on its own to start moving. And for the patrol state, I painstakingly set up path controls, which I mentioned before I never ended up needing, but the code for getting the path was still very useful. Using a path node will get you moving along a path, I know, right? That's defined in the editor, which is good for platforms and objects that you want to follow a specific path. path. What I actually wanted was the enemy to move around in a confined area, a point that's chosen randomly. I went with using a navigation mesh instance instead, which was ultimately the simplest method to get this work. Once I had the point where I wanted the enemy to move, I simply used the built-in method getSimplePath, 
which returns a pull vector array that I can use to drive my enemy to whatever location that is set. Doing this allows the nav mesh to create a path that takes it into account the environment. So we avoid any obstacles that don't walk off edges we're not supposed to. Remember, we're not applying gravity to this AI, so if it walks off something that, you know, there's no platform below it, it's not going to fall. So we need it to know that it can't walk off the edge. Once I realized what I wanted, I initially just set up the enemy to choose a random point along the path that I had made. Um, it worked just fine, but later on, in an effort to simplify things, I simply chose a point from a random vector 3. Uh, which did the exact same thing on screen, required fewer nodes and fewer code. Uh, the path, it was there and it was useful to use when I was testing. I can still see where having a path would be helpful, like if I wanted the enemy to patrol a perimeter and I still wanted to stop every so often and look around then it would be of use, so I'm still glad that I learned about that node and how it works. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. I've got a functioning AI that I can drop into any 3D game. Uh, I don't have any art to go with my enemies at the moment, uh, but you know, they wander around, they look like they know where they're going. Uh, so that's all really good. I'm super happy with it. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know. Please like, subscribe, share, all that great stuff. Um, yeah. Um, hopefully I'll be back next time with the uh, a story about actually getting them to kill me. Not literally, of course. I'll see you guys next time.